as far up into our armpits as we can, and then drop them down about an inch or so into that space, that little divot in the arm between bicep and tricep. Uh, and once you have your bands there, tighten them as much as you can, allowing for no more than one finger to fit in the band. So we want about that much space. If you can fit two, tighten those guys up a little bit. And let's go ahead and start our cycle. And because we're gonna be going through a number of exercises today, see if you can keep resetting your cycles between each different exercise that we do. So that way you don't get stoppage in the middle of your hard work. Uh, and lastly, if you do not already have water, please go grab some, take a big sip. Um, and as we go throughout our workout, we wanna check our cap refill. So a good way to do that when the bands are on our arms, hold your hand up, let's all do it together. Give the base of your palm a press. You should see it turn white and then go back to normal coloring within about three seconds. And if it takes a lot longer than that, your bands are probably on a little too tight so you can loosen them up. Uh, so with the technical aspects being said, and I'll let John jump in at any point if he has anything to add. Um, per usual, our workout is only a suggestion. I want you to listen to your body. You know yourself best. So if something doesn't feel right, back off of it. Don't do it. Even ask for a modification. That's why I'm here. We have a slightly different class today than normal. We're doing 50-50. So we have normal strength, hard work, but we're also going to be working in some mobility and flexibility because just like anything in life, balance is where we want to be. So we can build, build, build muscle, but if we're not stretching, lengthening everything out, then we're a little bit more apt to injury. So with that being said, Arms to start, let's just warm up the shoulders a little bit. Take your arms out to your side and just start to drop in circles. I'm on my knees so that I can see everyone. If you wanna come up to stand, go for it. Just moving the arms around. And I know that I personally tend to have issues with neck and shoulder tension. And I've had a number of massage therapists and other fitness professionals tell me that this is one of the best things we can do to release that because we're moving our scapula, the backs of our shoulders around where tension tends to live and move around the other way. And it's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Same thing. Arms straight up. Move around. Think the shoulders all the way up and around. and opposite direction. And then we're gonna go ahead and dive into our workout and do some more stretching at the end of our workout just to release all the work that we've done. So starting with forearms, smaller muscles before bigger, you're gonna make your way onto your hands and knees. We press our palms into the mat and then it's called a fingertip push-up. So we come onto the tips of our fingers and we come back down. We come onto the tips of our fingers and we come back down. If you want more of a challenge, you can do this in plank, but it's really hard. I suggest doing it on your knees. So we've got 30 seconds of these. Start to root your hands underneath your shoulders and then press up and all the way down. Press up onto those fingertips and all the way down. I'm starting a nice slow pace just to get used to the movement. If you want to add some balance for these, you can extend one leg back behind you. Purpose here is just to get our forearms woken up. So paying attention to that, most importantly. And last 10. Up and down. All right. Good. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Give the wrist a roll. Move them around the other way. And we'll jump into our second set. So make your way down into your hands again. Come up onto the fingertips, up and down. For this round, see if you can move a little bit faster. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Starting to see the veins and the forearms working, maybe getting a slightly darker color in the form, which is actually a good thing. That's what we want. Up, down, up, down. We're half done. All right. Good. Last 10. Ooh, we have five, four, three, two, and rest. Shake it out. Let's get the heart rate up. We're only doing one heart rate boost with the bands on our upper body. So let's make it a good one. The first exercise for heart rate booster does not actually involve our arms, but that's okay. It gets our heart rate going. It's a reverse lunge. Hands to hips. You step back, in, back, in. So we have 30 seconds of that. Second 30 seconds, ankle taps. You can tap, tap 
or you can add the jump. Hop, 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 hop. Starting to open up the hips. Last 30 seconds, mountain climbers moving. Okay? So first 30, reverse lunge, hands to hips. Let's do it. And to start to get into the upper body as we do this, you can reach your arms up, opening up your shoulders. Step it back and up, back and up. And if you have a desperate need for speed today, you can jump. Okay? So, yes, I see a lot of arms up. I love it. Now, maybe instead of jumping, we can take as much bend as possible out of our elbows and pull the arms in line with the ears. So we're really getting into the shoulders. Awesome, DX. Yes. Good, last 10. Mm -hmm. Ooh, go, let me go. Five, four, three, two. Ankle taps. Option to tap or add that jump. Hop, 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 hop. We're moving. Woo. And as you do this, keep growing taller. We don't want to slouch out. If you can't touch your ankle, that's fine. Just kick them as high as you can. We're doing a dance. Keep going, 20 more seconds. Woo, light on those toes. Nice, Brandon. Good, John. Good, last 10. Keep going, Caleb. <laughs> we have five, four, three, two. Everyone drop down. Mountain climbers, last thing. Up, 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 up. Try and use the strength of your shoulders to keep your arms steady so we're not shifting in the upper body. Keeping shoulders over wrist. Climb it out. And this is a 30 second set. So remember, a pace that is sustainable enough to last you the whole time you're moving. Last 15, we're half done. Now, we have 10 seconds left. Now is if you, when you wanna pick up the pace, go for it, fast as you can. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, rest. Give your wrist a roll. All right. So working into the triceps back of the arms. We've done these before and we're gonna do them again. So you're gonna make a diamond shape with your hands, your pointer finger and your thumb are in a diamond. You're gonna take that underneath your face and either on your knees, you're gonna press down and up or in regular push-up position, down, and up. Now, because the triceps are smaller muscles, you might have slightly less range of motion. I'm more concerned with your body staying flat, even if that range is smaller than this. Okay? Two 30 second sets. First one is normal, second one is slow motion. Down two, three, up two, three. First 30 seconds, let's move. To everyone on Instagram, keep going. Good job. Let's have a good Friday. Cool. Lily, those look great. Nice. All right. I can just see Devin's ceiling fan, but I like it. Last 10. Go, Bonnie, go. We have five, four, three, two. Come up. Tricep stretch, right arm across the body. Switch sides, left arm across the body. And release. Last exercise for our upper body. It's called a star plank. We're working our shoulders, our chest, and a whole lot of core. So in traditional plank, we have our joint stacked. I have my wrist underneath my shoulders. In star plank, I want to step my feet wide, reach my arms forward, and so everything is spread out like a star. So we're going to hold this for one minute. If you need to tap your knees down and take pauses, go for it. Otherwise, everyone make your way into star plank. So I come into a regular plank, I step my feet wide, I walk my arms up and out, and I hold and squeeze and breathe. Now, we want to lengthen out the spine as we do this. So keep pulling your heels back and the top of your head forward, creating traction so you can take some of the weight off the arms and the legs and then press the floor away from you with your arms. Give your glutes a squeeze, pull your belly in. We are half done. Woo. If you have the space, you can walk your hands out and up even more. Challenge your head, 
Your heart, your hips should stay in one long line. Last 15. Maybe you can walk it out even more. In 10, we're gonna take a break and drop the knees. See if you can take two or three more nice, deep, slow breaths here. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Everybody come down, roll the shoulders out. Shoulder mobility work. We explored some of this earlier this week and we're gonna keep diving into it. Arms up like a scarecrow. You can do this standing or on your knees. Start to drop your right hand down towards the floor and reach your left hand back behind you. Squeeze out as much range of motion as you can, keeping elbows in line with shoulders. We're going eight, seven, grow taller, six, five, four, three, two, switch. Opposite direction. Check those elbows, keep them up. Squeeze and press. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one more set. Your shoulders should be starting to get tired. If they're not, squeeze out even more. Press. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last one. Switch it up. Press it out. Eight, seven, six, five. Engaging the core for four, three, two, and rest. Feeling it? A little bit? <laughs> All right. Next set. Arms up to the side. Start to wrap the right palm up towards the ceiling. Wrap your left thumb down and back. Squeeze it out. Wrist in line with shoulders. Squeeze. We have eight. Imagine you're wringing out a dish towel. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, switch direction. Yes. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one more set. Ring it out. Squeeze and reach. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Reach longer, grow taller, breathe through it. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, release. Let everything hang, give yourself a wiggle. All right, now that was some mobility. Let's take some good old fashioned stretching. So find your right hand, take it between your shoulder blades. I call this the chicken wing. Tuck your chicken wing behind your head as best you can. Keep growing tall. And then find the back of your left hand. Start to slide it up the back of your spine. Now, it doesn't matter if your fingers touch or they don't. We want to keep pressing the elbows open, growing tall. And hold. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got about 30 more seconds here. And so it sounds slightly counterintuitive, but try and relax your shoulders away from your ears. And keep pressing your head into that right arm. Let's take three more breaths. Good. And release. Wiggle it out. And for some of us, this might not be a very fun place. Unfortunately, that's why we got to do it, keeping those shoulders loose and open so we don't get a lot of tension all up in here. So let's do the other side. Left hand between the shoulder blades. Find your chicken wing. Snuggle it back behind you. And then slide the back of the right hand up the spine, however far it can go. And often in the body, we'll have one side that's a little bit on our hands and knees keeping your hips over your knees we don't want to shift back here we want to stay forward stick your tailbone up walk your arms forward drop into a chest stretch and I want you to be pressing into the mat so much so that your elbows are off the floor maybe you come onto your fingertips just like we did those fingertip push-ups really getting into the chest the shoulders and we'll take three more breaths, dropping your heart towards the floor, lifting your tailbone up towards the ceiling. With each exhale, see if you can drop a little bit lower. 
and then start to walk the hands back towards your body. Shake it all out. And we're going to switch out to our leg bands. If anyone has questions, requests, comments, feedback, give me a Let's swap them out. Hey guys, this is John. Can you hear me okay, Laurel? Yeah, yes. you're back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, great. I got kind of a weird connection here. So as Laurel gets, or when Laurel gets close to the end of legs, go ahead and play around, guys. Play around with it and try to untether and check it out. It's a great way to work on the strength and hypertrophy piece. Um, everything we're doing with Laurel right now is in the cycle mode. The more you can do in the training mode, the more you can play around with some strength and power aspects of it. That's all. Nice Thanks, leg bands. Here we go. All the way up. All right. And I'm curious at the end of the session to hear what everyone thinks about stretching. Um, I thought it might be a nice way for us to kind of counterbalance all the hard work we've been doing. But if we're not having it and we just want to do pure cardio and strength, I take no offense and do these workouts for you. So just notice what you like, notice what you don't like, and by all means, please let me know. So all hooked up to the leg bands. Hey, Laurel, John, again, can I throw something out that was a comment after uh, yesterday's workout? Absolutely and, not. And yes, may, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no. May, maybe, uh, maybe you can repeat it for the Instagram, guys. But when you do stretch, uh, and it's at the very end of a workout, you know, like a 45-minute or hour-long thing, it's a great time to go ahead and just release the bands. Because now you have that whole systemic thing going on through your body. And a good way to just really release so you can get a full 100% stretch. That's just something to consider. That came up from one of a Chris Morgan swimmer. Super helpful. Thank you, John. Uh, and for the Instagrammers here with us, uh, John was telling us at the end of the stretch or at the end of the workout when you're stretching, releasing our bands can be helpful um, just to fully let the muscles go and really relax into the stretches. So um, we'll do some stretching with the bands and we can also do some without them as well. Uh, let's get started. Calves first, smaller muscles. So I'd like us to step into a lunge position, static lunge, right foot forward. And if you need a wall, uh, that's fine. If being in a static lunge position it does not feel good, you can just step your right foot forward and kind of shift your weight into that right knee. Otherwise, come into that full lunge position. Make sure you're not on a tightrope. So scoot your right foot over to the right. And then we're going to start to pop that right heel up and off the floor. So we go up and down. Up and down. We've got 30 seconds here. And as you're doing this, Imagine you're pulling your mat, your floor space in opposite directions with your toes. And down, up and down. And if you're in the modified version, just shifting the weight forward, smaller variation of lunge, up and down. We're half done here. Good, maybe see if you can sink your hips down a little bit lower, make it more challenging. And last 10, woo. Good, we're gonna lift the heel and hold in five. Four, three, two, static lunge, static heel lift. Hold, bend into that right knee, get the heel even higher. We have six, five, four, three, two, set it down and we'll switch sides. Left foot forward, right foot back. Make sure you're not in the tight rope. If you wanna keep your back heel down, you can. Otherwise, challenging the balance, come onto the toes of the back foot. And then in 30 seconds, we're just gonna go up and down with that left heel. Good, finding traction, pull them out apart with your toes. Making sure your spine is straight, no slouching here, nice and tall. You can do whatever you want with your arms. You wanna draw the wave, do it. Little YMCA, yeah, half done. See if you can sink a little bit lower. Feel those bands working. In five, we're gonna lift that heel and hold it. We have four, three, 
two, lift and hold. Drop your hips down, get your heel up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Shake it out. We're gonna do that one more time. This time you can either take the first variation or you can add to it. So we're gonna come into that lunge, right leg forward. We're gonna pick the front heel up, hold it there, and then we're gonna drop down and up, down and up. So try and keep your heel lifted the whole time. Time is rolling. Down and up. And we're not gonna work into it at the bottom. This is the only thing we're doing. So embrace that shaky sensation and just keep working through it. You don't have to conserve energy here. And up, half done. Get that back knee towards the floor. Keep your right heel up. Yes, keep going guys. I like it. Woo! Nice Brandon. We have five, four, three, two. Last set, switch side, left foot forward, stagger the legs. Get your left heel up, drop the back knee down, up, down, and up. Final 30 seconds, calf lift. Done. I can't see Judy, but good job. <laughs> awesome, Jeff. Wolf of Life is back. Go Adam, last 10. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Shake it out. Quick stretch. Step your right foot forward. Lift your right toes off the floor and then start to walk your hands down your right leg. Good, keep pulling toes and towards shin. Then go ahead and switch sides, step your left foot forward, pick the toes off the floor, walk your hands down the leg. And bring it up. And my goodness, we've done a lot of static work. Let's get our heart rate going. Reverse lunge, 30 seconds, go. Back, 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 back. If you need to jump, jump through it, go. If you wanna do arms up, do arms up. Let's move. Yes. After this, we're going to do ankle taps. Keep jumping. Chest up, arms up if you can do it. Half done. Woo. In five, we're going to come into ankle taps. We have four, three, two, and one. Tap, 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 tap. Option to add a hop. That's a stop. We know that we get a nice big stretch at the end of this, so let's keep going fast. Last 10. In five, we're gonna drop down into mountain climbers. We have four, three, two, and one. In plank position, climb it out, 30 seconds, go. I'm gonna tell you when we have 10 seconds left for an all out sprint. Other than that, focus on your breathing. Using our breath to help us gain more energy, more oxygen, we're working harder. Yes, last 10, all out, go, 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 go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, rest, drop your knees. We are in perfect position with our knees on our floor to set up for bare marches. So what that looks like, I tuck my toes, I lift my knees, I go back, in, back, in. What I don't wanna see, piking up. Nope, your butt stays in line with your hips the whole time. If this does not work today, drop your knees, out, in, out, in. First set, 30 seconds. The first set, we're going slow motion. The second set, we're gonna go fast. But your hips have to stay stable. First 30 seconds, go. Come into bare position, knees one inch off the floor. Out, in, out, in. Awesome. Good, making sure to fully extend your leg back behind you. Think about it as being a little hamstring set. 
Nice, last 10. Keep that good form. We have five, four, three, two. Drop the knees. Everybody press your butt back towards your heels as much as you can. And if you have the flexibility, you can start to walk your hands back, lift your hips. Now to protect the knees, keep pulling your knees towards each other. Release the quads. Cool. Start to walk the hands forward. Tuck those toes, get the knees one inch off the floor. Second set, we're going fast. Kick, kick, kick. Woo! Quads should be feeling this. Make sure that your core is stabilizing your body enough that you're not shaking and moving or rocking. You are stable, only getting into those legs. Last 10 seconds, go, kick, kick, kick. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Press your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Walk your hands back to meet your feet. We have our last heart rate boost of the day. So first 30 seconds, reverse lunges, option, option to do jumps or step. Otherwise we're jumping. Let's move. Keep going Instagram. Keep going everyone on Zoom. Option to take the arms up. Woo, we're flying. Cool, good job. Good, in 10, we're gonna do ankle kicks. Nice Lily, nice Otto. We have four, three, two, ankle kick, go. Yes. Really get that foot up, move it over to the side, opening up our hips as we jump or step. Either way, last 10. Go guys, go. Light on the toes for five, four, three, and two. Everyone drop into it, mountain climbers. Last part of our cardio boost. Go, go, go. I'll tell you when you have 10 seconds left. Woo, I love it. All right. After these, we have one more exercise for our legs. Then we're gonna do our core. And then we're gonna stretch. Last 10 seconds, all out sprint. Go, go, go. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Run one way. And bring yourself up to stand. Let's slow down the heart rate before we get into the core, but still moving the body. So we did some static lunges. We hold the body in one position. This time we're gonna do some static squats with arm movement. So I step my feet really wide and I angle my toes out. It's called sumo squat. Now imagine you're holding, I don't know, a beach ball, a bag of cookies, whatever you wanna hold. Imagine you're holding something, right? and then start to bend into your sumo squat. You're gonna keep your legs down. You're gonna reach up, down, up, down. So keep your hips exactly where they are. First 30 seconds, go. Up, down, up, down. Sinking your butt a little bit lower as it opens up, as you have the opportunity. Getting the arms involved. Up, down, up, down. Yes, keep pressing the outer edges of your knees open and get your butt even lower. Down, up, down. Last 10. Four. We have five, three, two, one. Release it. Rock side to side. Second set. If, if you're needing extra today, drop your butt down into that sumo squat. First 30 seconds, you have one heel up. No, sorry. First 15 seconds, you have one heel up. Then I'll say switch and you can do the other one. If you're feeling crazy, you can do both, but please don't topple over. Angle those toes out, come down into your sumo squat. Last 30 seconds. Woo! <laughs> Keep it up. Chest up, butts down, drop them even lower. Yeah! 
with those arms, really reach them all the way up and over. You're swinging something. 10 more seconds, bottom down. If you want to switch your heels, switch it up. Yes. Keep those arms straight. Down, up, down, up. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Kick side to side, release it. Okay. Let's do some core. Come on down to the mat. Actually, everybody grab a drink of water. Mandatory cheers. Grab your water. Cheers. Take a big old sip. Good All time right. to untether if you want. You can untether now or we still have core. You can untether after. So either way. Um, yeah, if you want to untether, do it now. Let's take a quick break. I'm going to show you guys the core moves. Catch your breath, slow down for a minute, and then we'll do them all together. So the first ones are called ins and outs. You lift your head, neck, and shoulders off the mat. Everything is in, everything is out. Everything is in, everything is out. And you'll notice, even when I extend out, my back seems pressing the floor, no arching up like this. In, out. We have 30 seconds of that. You get to pick your pace depending on what your body needs. Second 30 seconds are a right side oblique crunch. So my feet are in the floor. I clasp my hands, I make little pointer fingers with my pointer fingers. I lift everything up and I just pulse over to the right. Up, up, up. Then I get that you can guess what the second 30 seconds are of this. We're going over to the left, okay? So first we have ins and outs, then we have right side oblique crunch, then we have left. So everyone make your way down onto your mat if you're not already there. 30 seconds, lift your head, neck and shoulders off the mat, get the knees into the chest. We go out, in, out, in. Now what I want you to be really mindful of here is that as you extend your arms out, you straighten them out and bring them all the way back in line with your shoulders. Don't let those elbows bend. We're opening up the shoulders as we fire up our core and we breathe. Good. Last 10. Fully lengthening through the heels to the fingertips. We have five, four, three, and two. Everyone root your feet into the mat. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders again. Clasp your hands. Point your fingers, reach up. We go over to the right. Lift, lift, lift. Left shoulders off the floor. See if you can get your right shoulder off the floor, squeezing your knees together to help activate the inner thighs, getting even deeper into that lift. If you can come all the way off your spine, I want to see it. We are more than half done. Use the length of your fingertips to pull you even higher. Active arms, last 10. Up and up. In five, we're going to reach back. Let the head relax and take a break. We have three, two, one. Reach your arms up and back behind you. Take a break. Let your hands fall to the floor. And then go ahead and clasp your hands, point your fingers, reach up, everything over to the left, last part of our core work, up. Now see if you can get all the way off your spine, belly to thighs, back down. And if you can't, that's what we're working towards. Working the lower abs, working the upper abs, and working the sides of our abs. Woo! Keep going, good job. These can be slow. They don't have to be fast. Last 10 seconds. See if you can give me two more really good, really precise movements. We have five, four, three, two, and rest. Knees into the chest. Rock and roll up and down. Bring yourself up to sit. As John mentioned, if you want to untether, you can do that now. And that's actually a good question. John, would you recommend just everyone untether universally? I lost John. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yes, I would. Is okay. Steve? Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. We've done a lot of work this week. Let's release it. So everyone rise on up to stand. And we have a number of stretches we're going to do. Some of them are active stretches. So think about a rubber band 
lengthening and releasing. We want to keep lengthening it longer and longer each time we stretch. So we're going to start stepping the feet wide. I'm going to angle this down a bit so you can see. And step the feet wide. And we've done a version called Cossack Squat where we've done an active version of this to build strength. This one we're going to do to build flexibility. So my feet are angled out to the sides ever so slightly. You can take your hands to your hips. And I want you to bend into your left leg. And think about sinking your butt towards the floor. Get as low as you can. I don't expect you to get the flow. Now, you might notice that your left heel starts to pop off the floor. That means you've gone too low. Back out of it. Good. Now let's move into the other side. Bend into the right leg. Get your butt low. Check the heel. Check your spine is straight. And then let's go to the other side. So we're going to keep moving side to side for 30 seconds here. I don't care if you do two reps or you do eight or 10. What's most important here is that you're getting lower and lower each time. And my body does not naturally do this. I practice these every day. So it's kind of like speaking a foreign language. If you don't use it, you lose it. Good. Last 10 seconds. Balance yourself out, getting low, and then come up to stand. Take your hands to your hips, draw some big circles, move around. Move around the other way. And that was just active stretching, right? We were lengthening, tightening, lengthening, tightening. Now let's do some passive stretches. We just lengthen that muscle and we hold it. So take both hands over to your right leg. Walk the hands down your right leg as far as you can go towards your ankle. And just let yourself hang. We've got our next 30 seconds here. Tucking the chin into the chest. Letting the back of the neck be long. And trying to keep the legs as straight as we can. And sometimes here we tend to tense our shoulders, our jaw. See if you can release it and breathe a little bit slower. We've got 10 more seconds here. Give your head a shake, yes. Take one more big breath. And then go ahead and roll on up to stand. And you know what's coming. We're going to move into the other leg. Both hands over to the left leg. Walk your hands down the leg, letting your forehead fall over to the left. And letting the weight of the upper body really pull you into the stretch. Let the shoulders hang. Give your head a shake, no. And see if you can relax the muscles in your forehead, across your brow. We've got 10 more seconds here, two breaths. Good. And when you're ready, roll up to stand, heel toe the feet together. We've done the active stretch called good mornings a number of times in classes. So we're going to do that here. Take hands to opposite shoulders. And keeping the legs straight or with a micro bend, hinge forward. And rise all the way back up. Nice flat back, straight spine. We hinge forward. And we come all the way up. We're going to do 30 more seconds of these. And then we're just going to let everything go and hang in a forward fold. So use this opportunity to open up the backs of the hamstrings. And then hopefully when we take the forward fold, you might notice a little bit more range, a little bit more flexibility than you have typically. And each time you hinge forward, see if you can drop a little bit deeper. Think leading with your belly button. Good. And go ahead and hinge forward, hold it. And then release the arms, let everything hang. You can give yourself a rock side to side here. And I want you to imagine the very tip top of your head melting towards the floor. Imagine you're a rag doll. Let yourself be loose. We've got 10 more seconds. And then we're going to roll up to stand very slowly so we don't get dizzy and we're gentle on our spine. Take a big breath. And one vertebrae at a time, as slowly as you can, roll up to stand until we come all the way up. And then we're going to go ahead and make our way down onto hands and knees. 
So once you're in that tabletop position we're familiar with, step your left foot up between your hands. Make sure ankle is over, is under knee, and then come up into what I call the proposal position. And just like in our lunges, if you want to scoot that foot over to the left a little bit, you can. We're going to open up the front of the right quad and the hips. So start to bend into that front knee, drop your hips down, and shift out of it. Bend into that front knee, drop down, and shift out of it. And we're going to do a few more active stretching. And this is one of the only times in our workouts where I'm going to tell you it's okay if your knee goes past your ankle. You want to try and keep your chest up as you do this, down and up. And on this next one, let's hinge into it and hold hips down, chest up, squeeze your chest to protect your low back. Get low. Again. And for some, you might feel a little bit of a pinching in the left, the front of the left hip. That's normal. You're also getting a psoas stretch. So if you're feeling it in there as well, it's not a bad thing. Hips down, chest up, drop even lower into it. And then start to shift your weight back. Bring your hands down to the floor or keep them on your front thigh. Start to kick that left leg forward, walking your hands down your legs, maybe taking them to the floor for a big old hamstring stretch. And making this one active is kind of hard, but you're just going to take a little bend into that knee and then straighten it. Bend into the left knee and straighten. Let's do three more. Last two. And final one, straighten that left leg, let the upper body hang in round. Out getting our belly button and our chest towards our leg. And for some people, this might not be a pleasant place to be. See if you can focus on your breath instead of on any pain you might be feeling. Noticing where you can breathe a little bit slower, a little bit deeper. So we're activating our parasympathetic nervous system which tells us it's okay to rest and relax. We don't need to be fighting or flighting just because we're stretching. One more breath. And then start to rebend into the front knee, step it back, give the hips a wiggle side to side. And then we're gonna do the other side and then come down to sit. So this time, step your right foot up between your hands, check to make sure ankle is underneath the knee, adjust accordingly. Step the foot over to the right, come up into proposal position. And let's make the front of the quad hip stretch active. So we bend into it and release out. We bend into it and release out. And keep moving. I'm going to check to make sure everyone's set up in good position. Awesome. Chest are up. Yeah. I love it. Now bend into that front knee and hold it. Keep dropping your hips lower and lower. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. We all tend to do this when we stretch. And as you start to shift your weight back, start to kick that left leg straight. You can bring hands down to thigh or the floor and then we're gonna make it active. Bend into the front knee and straighten it. Bend into the front knee and straighten. Last two. Final one, straighten and hold, get low. <laughs> and as we're here, I want you to focus on making your exhale slightly longer than your inhale. So counting to four on your inhale and six on your exhale. And take two breaths like that. All right, start to rebend into the front knee, step it back, rock side to side. And we're gonna come down now for my personal favorite part of this entire workout, it's called the 90-90. And I know Adam's on here and he's familiar with this and is probably very tempted to leave at this point because it's hard, but you can do it. It's a good heart. So you're gonna take one shin parallel with the front edge of your mat if you have a mat. If you don't, think front shin parallel with your shoulders. You're gonna take your left shin parallel with the side edge of your mat. And if you don't have a mat, think that your left knee is aligned with your left hip out to the side, okay? 
So one knee is in line with the hip forward. The other knee is in line with the hip going out to the side. Now, you automatically might be starting to topple over here. That's okay. Give yourself a kickstand. And if this left hip feels crampy and horrible, you're doing it right. Okay? So take your left arm across the body. If you can, take your right arm across the body. Now we're going to start to hinge forward and come back up. We hinge forward and we come back up. As you do this, try and keep your spine straight. So no rounding out. We have three more. You should be feeling a big stretch in your outer right hip. For two. This time we hinge and hold it. Keep dropping your belly button down. Take your hands behind your head. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Come back up. Nice job. Take your left hand to the foot. Pick it up. Give it a rock side to side. If you can, take your right hand to the knee, sitting up nice and tall. Now, release the leg. Keep it up. We have five, four, three, two. Set it down. We're going to do that one more time. If the back leg is cramping too much, you can kick it straight to give yourself a rest. Otherwise, keep working into this. One hand to the knee, one hand to the foot. Rock it side to side. Now release the hands, keep growing taller, keep it up. We have five, four, three, two. Heck yeah, set it down. Find your back knee, your left knee, pull it back an inch. And then start to walk your hands back behind you, pressing the left side of your butt towards the floor as you keep the left knee rooted down. And this is where it starts to feel really weird. Hold here and I'm gonna explain what's happening. So your right leg, is in external rotation in the hip joint. So that's like when we sit or stand like this, okay? This is neutral, this is external. This back leg that feels really awkward is in internal rotation. We don't do a lot of this. But because our hip is a ball and socket joint, we wanna be able to move around in all ranges of motion. So that's what we're working into here. And because it's not normal, it doesn't feel normal. So come back up. And now try and do your best, kick your left foot off the floor. Set it down. Two more times. Pick it up. Set it down. See if you can do it with no hands. Pick it up and hold. We have five, four, three, two. Set it down. Release everything. Butterfly stretch. We're going to do the other side. All right. Let's set ourselves up. Left knee is in line with the hip going forward. Right knee is in line with the hip out to the side. So it's called the 90-90 because we have two 90 degree angles in our knees. Now it's okay to take the left hand down as a kickstand, right arm across the body. If you're feeling it, left arm across the body, we hinge forward. Now earlier when we were doing our shoulder stretches, we talked about how one side of the body might feel a little bit, if not significantly tighter than the other. You're gonna feel that, that here. One side might be a breeze, one side might be horrible, or it might be soft. Good, two more. Good, this time we hinge forward and hold it. Hands behind the head, no matter how low you can go. Keep working into it, pressing your elbows back. We have eight, seven, yes, six, five, four, three, two. Come back up. Take your left hand, sorry, your right hand to the foot. Option, take the left hand to the knee, give it a cradle, little rock. Doo -doo -doo. Get length in your spine here, then release it. Keep it up, five, four, three, two. Set it down. One more time, pick it up, give it a rock, and release. Five, four, three, two, set it down. Find your right knee, scoot it back an inch, and then take your hands back behind you, pressing your butt and your right knee towards the floor. And I've actually never taught this over Zoom before, so if it's really confusing, I apologize, but what I see on the screen is that everyone's got it. So it's really fun, my kind of fun. Yeah, keep pressing your butt down. And so oftentimes in older people, uh, we can see that there's a more frequent occurrence of needing hip replacement. And sometimes that happens because when someone falls and they don't have a good range of motion, the bone breaks because their leg can't go into internal rotation. And so that's when we find injury. The more that we can get our hips in all different ranges, the better, the more athletic we are, but also the less apt we are to get injured. Keep pressing your butt down on that note. And then come on up to sit. 
Pick your right foot off the floor. Set it down, hands up, pick that foot up. Set it down, last one, pick it up and hold. We have five, four, heel up, three, two, and release it, butterfly stretch. Last thing here, root your fingers into the floor. Start to walk them forward. Let yourself hang over your legs. Take a big breath in. Let it go. Take an even bigger breath in. And let it go. And slowly roll yourself up to sit. Bring your hands together and give yourself a big old round of applause. Good job, everyone. Great week of working out. I love seeing all the familiar faces. I'll let Steve and John take it from here. I'm curious to hear thoughts and feedback about the stretching mobility, good or bad. So have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you all on Monday. Thank you very much. Steve, and I got a quick public service announcement from one of the things early. Can I just take a second? Yeah. yeah. OK. Hey, guys, I heard somebody asking right when I came on. I know I came on a little bit late. Sorry about that. But um, about when they were untethered, the bands, one of their bands seemed like maybe it wasn't staying inflated. A great test for the whole Cycle 2.0 system is to go into the neutral mode. So tap the red button. All right, that's neutral. Then go to the training mode. So push and hold the L at the top there. And when you see the word, I don't know if you can see, I know it's a little blurry, but it should say training. And go ahead and pump this thing all the way up, all the way up to 400. So you just push crow all the way up to 400 and hook the bands up and then just pressurize the whole system. And it's easy to find where the leaks are. If there's a pinhole leak and you're not sure where it is, it could be in the in these tubes, it could be in the off the bands. Easiest thing to do, take a mixing bowl full of water. Don't put this, <laughs> don't put that in water, but put the band in water and wherever the bubbles are, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be close to one of these connections where maybe there's been a lot of kinking and all you gotta do is just pop this off, cut off that quarter inch, put it back on, problem solved. That's all I got. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all. Take care. Bye. Bye, Thank Libby. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Brandon. Bye. -bye. Bye.